Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Um, this is the first round recap from the NFL draft from last night. I'm going to go through all 32 picks in the first round, give out early grades and takeaways. All right, number one, Jacksonville Jaguars go Trevor Lawrence, quarterback out of Clemson. A-plus, obviously, this is the best quarterback I've seen get drafted, arguably, since Peyton Manning. And I think that Lawrence is going to be a star. And Jacksonville had no choice. Number two, the New York Jets, Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. I gave the Jets an A. I had Justin Fields ahead of him on my board. But can't go wrong with Wilson. Um, My issue is that I'm still a little skeptical about whether last year was a career for him. We're not number three, the San Francisco 49ers. Trey Lance, the quarterback from North Dakota State. I give that a C minus only because I feel that Fields should have been the choice. Trey Lance, to me, I'm skeptical about because he was in the FCS and only played one game over the past year or so, but. Prior to that, he was 17-0, and he was tremendous. But um, I'm still, as I said, skeptical. And so much for all the rumors about Mac Jones being a lock to go to San Francisco at three. Although Lance closed as the betting favorite, so something must have been leaked. Number four, the Atlanta Falcons take Kyle Pitts to 10-9 out of Florida. I give them an A um, for this pick. Um. A lot of people are going to argue, oh, they should have traded down and started a little bit of a rebuild. But um, Matt Ryan's still there at the tail end of his prime, so this pick makes a lot of sense. Like I said, this reminds me of when the Giants took Saquon Barkley number two, but the difference is that that really didn't work out like they wanted because he was the win-now pick for one last hurrah with Eli Manning. That didn't work out. This is the win-now pick for the last hurrah for Matt Ryan, so we'll see. Cincinnati at five takes Jamar Chase, the wide receiver out of LSU. I give them an A. Um, I think it should have been steel, but you can't go wrong with Chase as Chase and Joe Burrow are reunited. Number six, the Miami Dolphins. Jalen Waddle, wide receiver, Alabama. I give them an A+. Plus. Either Waddle or Devontae Smith, you can't go wrong. Miami, to me, um, prioritized building around Tua Tunga Valoa. And they accomplished their goal. That's why they get the plus by their um, pick, by their letter. Number seven, the Detroit Pistons. Or, I'm sorry, the Detroit Lions. I have basketball in my head, but I'm sorry. Penn A. Seal, offensive tackle. We're going to give that an A+. Plus. To me, this was this or Devontae Smith were the low picks that would have gotten an A-plus for me if I was Detroit. But this makes a lot of sense because Sewell um, comes in and gives Jared Goff much needed protection. Number eight, the Carolina Panthers. JC Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. I give this a B plus. Um I felt there were better needs for the Panthers on the board, such as offensive line and even wide receiver to help out Sam Darnold, but I understand the JC Horn selection here. And you could argue certain here as well, but um not bad, Carolina. I give this a B plus. Number nine, the Denver Broncos take Patrick Sertain. The second cornerback, Alabama, I give this an A. So Denver decides to pass on a quarterback and go with 13. Maybe they're in play for Aaron Rodgers, which we're going to get to on my regular podcast in a couple of moments. So 13, the Denver, I give that an A. He'll help them a lot. And what makes a better or a secondary that's good even better. Number 10, the Philadelphia Eagles, as they trade up from 12 for Dallas. Devontae Smith, wide receiver for Alabama, they get an A+. This is the pick that I think had to be done for Philadelphia. They've lacked a big-time receiver the past couple of years. They've had names, but they never really showed for it. So they jump the Giants and take Devontae Smith, and they get an A+. The Chicago Bears move up from 20 to 11 as the Giants get back the 20th pick. A 2022 first round pick, a fourth this year, and a fifth next year, which is an excellent haul for that pick. And we'll get to what the Giants do with the 20th pick later. But um, Chicago 
I give a lot of credit because they picked the right player with the 11th pick, and it was worth trading up for Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields. I give that an A+. Plus. I think this could turn out to be a win-win trade. Maybe a slight edge to the Bears because of who they selected, but if it was Mac Jones, I would not have given them the edge in this trade for the time being. I don't blame Dave Gettleman for trading back and getting more assets here because um, they didn't get your guy, and there's nobody worth taking 11th other than arguably Micah Parsons and Ray Schultz Slater, who we'll get to in a second here. So good on the Bears for being ballsy to move up and get their quarterback of the future. It should be their quarterback for now, Justin Fields. I give to that an A+. Plus. Number 12, the Dallas Cowboys, as they trade back from 10 to 12. They take Michael Parsons, the linebacker from Penn State, to give this an A. Um, solid pick for the Cowboys, but um, they're already deep at that position. They got Jalen Smith. They got Leighton Van Der Esch. So, like, that's why... They boycott the plus. I know it's a position of depth, but it's different from C.D. Lamb from last year. That was different, but like I still give the Cowboys an A. They got the best defensive player in the draft, arguably. Number thirteen, Los Angeles Chargers. Rayshon Slater, offensive tackle, Northwestern. I give that an A plus. They should be fired up that Slater dropped to them. People had Slater as high as going seventh to the Lions at one point. Um, very versatile guy and is the player that literally will become Justin Herbert's new best friend. So I get I give an A plus for that pick. Number fourteen, the New York Jets, as they trade up from twenty three. I did not see the package for this as they get the pick from the Vikings. Elijah Vera Tucker, guard out of USC, who's the, who's the trade-up target for the Jets, and I give them an A+. Plus. That was an excellent pick by Joe Douglas. Um, they needed offensive line help to protect their new quarterback, Zach Wilson. And Vera Tucker, somebody that is super versatile. And he really... Um, was somebody that was try rising up draft boards heading into last night. So well here's the trade. The Jets get fourteen and one forty three, which is in the fourth round. Minnesota got twenty thirty sixty six. In 86. So the Jets moved up with two thirds and their first to this pick. And I think Minnesota got a nice haul. I, I thought the Giants got a better haul for 11, obviously, because they got an extra first round pick. That's because that's how desperate Ryan Pace was to perhaps um, swing and a miss or swing and hit the ball out of the park. Obviously, he wants the latter, not the former, but um, yeah, a solid pick for the Jets. At 14, a great, great pick. Number 15, the New England Patriots, Mac Jones, quarterback Alabama. I give this an A+, plus only because they did not trade up for him. The fact that he fell to them I thought was great. Um, so Belichick gets the guy that I think fits them the most in Mac Jones. As they grab their quarterback of the future. Number 16, the Arizona Cardinals, Zavin Collins. Edge rusher Tulsa gets pick a C. There are better edge rushers on the board. I'm not a huge fan of Collins. 17, the Las Vegas Raiders. Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle Alabama. I give this an A. The uh, Raiders needed offensive line help with all the losses of free agency and releases and whatnot. And Leatherwood is somebody that is versatile. Number 18, the Miami Dolphins. Jalen Phillips, defensive end Miami. Give this pick an A. They get a much-needed pass rusher, and it's the homecoming scenario here. Number 19, the Washington professional football team. Jamin Davis, linebacker, Tucky. I give this pick a B. Davis is a good player, but he shouldn't have went this high. I understand Washington was picking from a position of somewhat need. 
Number 20, the New York football giants from the Chicago Bears. Kadarius Tony, wide receiver, Florida. To me, Tony is more like a um, high second rather than a mid first. So that's why I give his pick a C plus. I think the Giants could have got him in the second round, but to be fair to them, why they get the plus sign is because um, Chicago and at 20, Washington at 19, those are places I've seen him in the mock draft. There's a chance the Colts would have taken him at 21. I think Tennessee was a threat at 22. So there's reasons why I understand where they – um, why they went with Tony. Um, I think Bateman would have been a better option. I think that um, Rondell Moore I would have liked here. Greg Newsom, Christian Darasaw to me would have been the excellent pick. Caleb Farley would have been nice. But I understand they went with the position of need and they continued their off-season goal of seeing whether Daniel Jones is the right guy or not. So that's why this is not a failure of a pick. To me, Kadarius Tony's like a Sammy Watkins type of receiver, which isn't bad. I like Sammy Watkins. He's a good player. So, um, yeah, then the Giants could address later needs in the later rounds. And I thought that Kadarius Tony was a really good fit. For the New York football Jets, by the way. I just like that fit of him on the Jets I'd rather than the Giants. Although not a awful pick. 21, the Indianapolis Colts. Quiddy Pay, defensive end, Michigan. I give this an A. Pay falls to them. I thought that that could have been an option for the Giants here at 20 as well. I think that that could have been an, an option for Miami at 18. Vegas at 17. So, Pay goes to the Colts as they get some much-needed youth in their pass rush. 22, the Tennessee Titans. Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. I give this an A. Um, they didn't have to move up for him. He comes in and replaces Adoree Jackson. So, it's a nice pick by Tennessee. They better just hope he's healthy. 23, the Minnesota Vikings. Christian Darris, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech. I give them an A+. Plus. That's just amazing. Everyone, their brother had him going to the Chargers at 13. And then there's some, like, rumblings about him slipping, but I don't think anybody thought he'd go this far. Good on the Vikings for stagging on a good player at 24 or 23 with Darasaw. So I give them an A+. Plus. Pittsburgh at 24 goes to Najee Harris, the running back out of Alabama. Many people thought this was the pick for Pittsburgh. I bet this would be plus. Um, I think that they could have gone other directions, like cornerback, defensive end, offensive line. But I bet you if Darasaw was still there, that would have been the pick. And Newsom, I think, would have been an interesting pick for Pittsburgh. I do not or did not see them going with receiver because they're already loaded at the at the position. Put away was in play for them, but ETN, or I'm sorry, Harris. Um, obviously, Pittsburgh going with the uh, one last hurrah for Ben Roethlisberger with that pick. 25, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Travis ETN running back Clemson, so Trevor Lawrence is reunited with his buddy. I give this pick a B. Jacksonville had other needs. They could have got ETN in the second round. Maybe, maybe there are rumblings about ETN going to uh, the Buffalo. Or Tampa, so Jacksonville just wanted to take him. So Urban Meyer is taking all of Dabo Sweeney's players. So that's kind of funny. I actually predicted them to take Amari Rogers in my uh, pre draft podcast on Wednesday. So it's kind of funny that they took ETN here. So I give that pick a B. I think that um, he's an upgrade over James Robinson, too. Number 26, the Cleveland Browns. Greg Newsom, cornerback, Northwestern. This pick would be plus. Cleveland didn't really have a need at corner all that much. I think they should have went with linebacker or defensive tackle. But no, they go with the cornerback in Newsom. So I give this pick a B plus. 
The Ravens at 27th went with Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. I give that an A-. minus. Um, That wasn't a bad pick by Baltimore. Um, They needed a receiver. Bateman's a nice fit with Hollywood Brown. Number 20, the New Orleans Saints, Peyton Turner, defensive end. Houston, give this a C-. minus. This is just the worst pick of the first round to me. Um, although they traded up for uh, Marcus Davenport, and um, I don't think Davenport was worth what they gave up that year. Which we, Peyton Turner, was like a day two or three pick. Not a great pick for Sean Payne. They're better pass rushers on the board. 29, the Green Bay Packers. Eric Stokes, cornerback, Georgia. I give this pick a B-. minus. Um, one of their more pressing needs was that wide receiver. And another one was on the offensive line or at linebacker. But they go with the nice player in Stokes. So I give that a B-. minus. Number 31, the Baltimore Ravens. Jason Away, defensive end, Penn State. I give that a B+. Plus. A nice pick there at 31. They needed pass rush help to replace um, Matt Chudon and um, uh, um, Ngakwe, so that makes sense. And number 32, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers go Joe Tyrone, the defensive tackle out of Washington. Give that a C+. Not the biggest fan of that pick, um... I understand they went with a position of future need here. They're bringing the band back together, so they really didn't need much. But Christian Barmore would have been a much better pick than Joe Tyrone, so I'd give that a C-plus for the time being. All right, so on Saturday night or Sunday, I'm going to do a show recapping um, rounds four through seven. And potentially tonight or tomorrow morning, I might do it rounds two through three. If not, then I'll do it all on Sunday, which is probably the more likely option. So stay tuned for my regular show, which is going to drop shortly after this one.